Right, okay. So um, I'm Sophie Addison um, and I'm the marketing manager um, and business growth um, manager really for Addison Group. So we've got three companies. We've got Addison Project who are a multidiscipline engineering design project and construction management company um, that's been established for a long time since 97, 1997 in um, Thornton Cleveley's on the Hill House Industrial Estate. And then we've also got Addison Precision who um, are a bespoke precision engineering component parts um, and assemblies company. And then also we have Addison Engineering Services. So they, they're like a hands-on hands engineering services um, pipe work and sheet metal workers. So it's a very male heavy environment um, who, who we have on, on staff and about 250 people. So we've always had the ethos um, and culture that our people are our strongest assets. So promoting healthy mental and physical habits um, and support within our teams has always been really important. Um, and more so, there's been much more of a focus on you know developing resilience in mental health so we've just recently kind of january time ended up um having a, a kind of a mental health an official accredited kind of support with um a chosen number of people within the company so strategically chosen from the managing director at the top with marcus um addison and then also um through senior management teams and also the hr department so a lot of people that are dealing with people within the company and obviously covid lots of people were working from home and also they were working within the company throughout so um it became quite a lot you know a lot more prevalent that people could be struggling or people might have issues on top of what's happening in the workplace and responding to you know external things or their own home environment so we also did um very sadly three years ago um we did as a workforce experience a suicide uh, within somebody in the workforce so that again raised a big issue um and you know supporting the people that had to deal with it and 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 um and then that raised a lot of um kind of information really because then even talking to that particular person's parents it was clear that although in the workplace there were no signs of any kind of struggle and um, he had actually attempted it five times you know from he struggled with it through all his um teenage life and all the way up so and, and had attempted suicide five or six times so so we had a real kind of responsibility really to support the staff well-being and and do something so our hr department um, kind of has quite a lot of good relationships with um, kind of people that offer courses and, and, you know, really worked hard to try and find some training that was, as, as it happened for us, we ended up with some funded training through the NHS and it was um, through a company called Every Life Matters. Um, they were the training provider. So on this slide, I've actually put the, the kind of contact details for them. So I think these slides get sent out anyway so if you did want to you know use them or I know that there's lots of other places that do it um, and their accreditation comes from Mental Health First Aid England so that ended up being a two-week course but it was four two-hour webinar sessions so I think they, they would have done it kind of you know in real life but because of Covid we ended up doing it online which was great so it was two lots of two-hour sessions within the week and then you probably had about four one-hour homework kind of um tasks to do um, and it ended up really with increasing the knowledge and confidence with a key group of people just like you'd have first aiders that would be you know they'd know exactly what to do in a first aid situation and it also increased the awareness and reduces the stigma and um, gives some key people the actual tools that they need so you know if we're if we're ultimately after a society where mental health is all accepted and a normal part of life and everybody's you know got the skills to look after each other and your own mental health and it's kind of a start isn't it if you've got something going on in a workplace that you um you've started you know within your area and your structure and, and hopefully that then spills out into personal lives as well which it definitely does just like first aid if somebody's trained in first aid they might be able they might be helping somebody at the weekend which we also had one of our first aiders helping a a lady in a shop so again mental health first aid skills that kind of transfers into into that kind of thing so so the course itself um was giving you really it basically teach taught you in-depth skills for providing 
first aid to people who may be experiencing issues um, and it kind of explained what mental health is um, and you know the stigma and discrimination around it and then um, what the influences are on people's mental health so it could be you know a long-standing anxiety or depression or it could be something that's happened a loss or um, a, you know a very uh, of somebody's fine one day or they have an operation or things like that and just or even down to psychosis and suicidal thoughts so it really deals with specific mental health issues and the statistics surrounding it so it really get, goes in depth but basically it's not making you have to then deal with it and you know and cure people it basically gives you a, a five-step um approach on how to help a person who's in a mental health crisis all of a sudden or you can see the developing issues and you can kind of step in and approach them so it's it's just promoting that confidence and giving you the tools um, and the willingness to you know go and offer support um, and through case studies and actual practical activities throughout the course you, you gain that kind of experience and and um, confidence to to do that so they kind of work on a um, five letter approach so it's algae which they give you as a as a structure so then if you're in that position you know that you've got to approach and assess and assist them immediately and then listen and communicate and not be judgmental so that's you know a really good you know skill and you might have a, a care box where you've got like you were saying um know what room you take them to and, and make sure you've got tissues or you know drinks and things like that so that you've got a confidence that you can you know go and assist somebody quickly um, and then giving support and information to them so that's when you would have your numbers to hand for support groups and things so um, again you're not going to say right I'm going to help you and answer it you're there to listen you're there to support and then you know lead them to the GP or um, other support groups or encourage them to you know get the professional help that they need and also encourage other supports and friends and family so dealing with it you know there and then and 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 giving them that initial support and feeling confident enough to do so and using your judgment in that situation so so I think we kind of the idea you know what you've all been saying there because I've learned a lot as well from listening to Noel and Kerry about about that side of things you it's like Noel, you were saying the look, listen and link kind of structure. It's just giving you a structure within the workplace where you can be effective and, and get to people. So that's why it was chosen that a certain uh, group of people, not just the people that are natural nurturers from the, you know, from the extra looking at people, you'll say, well, they'll they'll be good at, you know, looking after people. But getting the people that are going to be having a meeting and, and looking at their teams, so having line managers so that you can they're having one-to-one -one meetings on teams or um, group department meetings and then you can check in on people so making it you know reducing that stigma and an awareness um, and trying to make a you know all the statistics about how mental health impacts on pro productivity and and creativity so if you the ideal is basically if you've got a mentally healthy community within your workplace then then you're going to be more productive you're going to have less people you know off through sickness or mental health issues and you know making sure that it's it's part of a joined up bigger picture approach so you've got to really have that support from the organization from the top all the way through really because the mental health first aiders skills are then going to be more effective um around the organization um, and I know on the mental health first aid england.org website which is on there they have an area where you can go and see case studies within organizations of how they've used their training and um, so it could be different you know between between organizations and how they do it and there's a guide on there for mental health first aiders once you qualified or when you know if you're looking to qualify for it and also a guide for employers of how you would you know how you could run it in your company so I'm not sure if the next slide might be useful at this point so I think I was saying before the benefits and impact it's had to us is that it has taught those in-depth skills for providing that very first mental health first aid to people who you know may be experiencing they might have long-term mental health issues um, and they do like I say the course goes into specific issues all the way to suicidal thoughts and how to deal with somebody having those and the action plan for each you know psychosis depression anxiety 
um, eating disorders, personality disorders, it, it does really give you quite a big array um, of mental health um, issues. And, um, and also, you know, people have been working from home, so they're not necessarily in the workplace and people continue to work from home in a lot of companies. So we have some people that are working off site. So again, keeping abreast of how people are um, and how they're coping is, has been very important to us. So we'll make sure that we, we put out promotional internal newsletters so it will promote self-care and you know even through covid healthy foods that you should have to you know improve your immune system or um uh, making sure that the support group phone numbers uh, uh, people have got those to hand so if they need you know samaritan's number or uh, you know mind all of these kind of numbers are there so that people have got them to hand if they if they need them um, and making sure that everyone in the workplace knows who the mental health first aiders are. So it might be, you know, people will turn to their friends um, who might not be within the organisation or, or a qualified mental health first aider, that's fine. But there'll be some people that, you know, might not know what to do if their friend does come and talk to them or a colleague. So making sure that people are aware who the mental health first aiders are within the company, remind them. Um, and make sure that you know there's resources available for the mental health first aiders to be able to carry out that initial um, kind of help and support consistently and you know confidently and also looking after the mental health first aiders so there's eight of us within our company so we make sure you know we check in with each other and you know see if anybody's had any issues um, obviously not breaching any kind of confidential things but like you were saying um, Noel, I think it was, um, you know, it's very clear that you're not you're not keeping a secret for people, but at the same time, you're not gossiping about it. You're just offering that assistance and making sure that people are confident in in what we've got in place as a company. So I think, you know, with it being a very male environment, the the statistics that we've learned and probably all know um, is the fact that um, there's a there's not necessarily the same level of um, ability to talk to each other or want to talk to each other about certain emotional situations and and you know they're just getting on with it or plowing on with jobs and things like that so we've noticed a difference we've always been quite a close workforce anyway when issues have come up but um more so now it's a bit more structured and um and people check in with each other more and you know, make sure that you know a meeting might happen, but then if you pick up on a mood of somebody, then you might go in there a bit and just say, you know, are you okay? And just asking that question that has opened up to dialogue before, you know, somebody's cat died, you know, all, all small things like that, that could be small to somebody, but you know, make somebody have a day off work, we'll have a day off work, you know, you know, take some time and, and you know, sympathizing with them. And, and then that person feels, you know, refreshed, they feel that somebody's understood, you know, that level all the way up to somebody who's, and, or a team that are responding to the fact that they've lost a colleague um, through a, you know, through a suicide. So it's such a broad spectrum. And when you look at the statistics and you have them presented to you that, um, you know, I, I mean, obviously we've got experts on here, but, you know, just the fact that the, the amount of suicides that um, when it comes down to it, there was no professional help you know searched out by the those individuals and you just think gosh if it wasn't if the stigma wasn't there and the awareness wasn't there perhaps you know that would help some people so trying to start within our organization is just a very small chink in society isn't it but if more of us do that and um, and have those people that have got the confidence and the tools um to offer that support then um i think we're we're, we're doing a good start aren't we